A reading from the book of the prophet Jeremiah. You duped me, O Lord, and I let myself be duped. You were too strong for me, and you triumphed. All the day I am an object of laughter. Everyone mocks me. Whenever I speak, I must cry out. Violence and outrage is my message. The word of the Lord has brought me derision and reproach all the day. I say to myself, I will not mention him. I will speak in his name no more. But then it becomes like fire burning in my heart, imprisoned in my bones. I grow weary holding it in. I cannot endure it. The Word of the Lord. Our first reading for this Sunday is taken from the prophet Jeremiah. I propose that we reflect on the theme of dying as the path to true life. Dying as the path or the way to true and full life. In the first reading, we see Jeremiah in the conflict situation. A conflict situation that could be an occasion for death. And who, who in his or her right mind would not want to get out of a conflicted situation that is not just about hurling words and uh, hurting glances at each other, but could even cost your life? I think it is part of human instinct to defend yourself and get out of such a conflicted situation. Jeremiah's first conflict was with his hearers, the people who heard his message. He described them as people who would not want to see him again, to hear him again. Why? Because whenever he opened his mouth, he was talking about violence, about destruction. Yeah, we understand the people who had heard Jeremiah's message. They could not hear in him or through him the voice and word of God. They just wanted to eliminate him. How difficult it must have been for the prophet Jeremiah, knowing that he was sent by God knowing that it is the Word of God that he was carrying and proclaiming, yet receiving, receiving hatred, animosity in return, a situation of conflict. For Jeremiah, that situation is rooted in a deeper conflict. What is it? It is the conflict that he had with God. He told God, Hey, Lord, you had duped me. You had fooled me. But the sad thing is, I had allowed myself to be duped. I had allowed myself to be prevailed upon. So here, we find two conflicts. The clear conflict, the external conflict between Jeremiah and the people who are becoming angry at him. And there is the internal conflict, Jeremiah facing God, the God who was stronger than he was, the God who had chosen him, the God who had sent him, the God whom he had been serving. And now he complains to God, look, look at what's happening to me. I am losing friends. I might even lose my life because of you. Now, in this situation of danger, of inner conflict, of wanting to run away, not only from people, but from God, Jeremiah says, but look, look, whenever I decide to run away from you, to save my life, I experience your word like fire in my bones, and I cannot contain it. 
I just have to proclaim your word. I just have to let it out. I must live. I must die to myself. I must die to my comfort. For I am a prophet. And it is in dying to self. It is when I do not look for comforts. It is when I find myself immersed in a conflicted situation that might cost my life. It is there that I feel and I experience the call to live, to live as a prophet. And he cannot deny it. And so he continues. This is an example of how we truly live by being prepared to die to self. A reading from the letter of Paul to the Romans. I urge you, brothers and sisters, by the mercies of God, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God, your spiritual worship. Do not conform yourselves to this age, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind, that you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and pleasing and perfect. The Word of the Lord. Our second reading for this Sunday is taken from the letter of Paul to the Romans. We have been reflecting on the theme of dying as the path to true and full life. This has been manifested to us in the first reading from the experience of Jeremiah the prophet. His life was threatened by the words that he had proclaimed to people, people who did not welcome his word as the Word of God. And he complained to God because of this. Yet, when he wants to run away from his mission and from his detractors in order to preserve his life, he experiences the Word of God in his heart, in his bones, like fire. He cannot contain it. He must proclaim it. But in the process, he would have to die to his comfort. He would have to die to his desire to live and preserve his life. But it is in such dying and denial of self will he experience the full life, the true life of a prophet. In the second reading, St. Paul talks about another way of dying so that we could live. St. Paul tells us to offer our bodies, our whole persons, as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God. Imagine offering one's self to God. Now, that sounds good. But in our day-to-day -day life, it is more comfortable, it is more gratifying even, to offer ourselves, our time, our talents to, oh, the many other gods of this world. Imagine if you offer yourself to a lucrative career or business. Wow, you would earn a lot of money you would be able to buy all the things that you have been dreaming of. You could uh, bring your family and your friends to places that they have not been to. Imagine if you offer yourself to ambition and to power. Oh, the heights that you could reach. The adulation that you would receive from people. The recognition huh, that they would gladly offer to you. Wow, these are things that we all enjoy. Yet, St. Paul says, 
you offer yourselves to God. Now, if you ask St. Paul, okay, that's noble. How do we do it? He says, we should be transformed. We should not conform to this age. We should not conform to this world. We should not conform to sin. So you die. You die. Transformation of the mind is a form of dying. The renewal of the heart is a form of dying. But when, according to St. Paul, we have transformed our minds, we have been renewed, then we will know what is pleasing to God, what is good, what is perfect, what is honorable. Then you live. Then your whole person becomes a living sacrifice acceptable to God and also pleasing to the eyes of the world. The words used by St. Paul may sound neutral, but when we look at our own experience, conformity to the world, you know, is something that we seem to be used to. But when we know that life, life, true life, is to be found in offering myself, my total being, to God out of love, then we know it involves a lot of dying. A dying that is demanded when we are renewed and we are transformed. So, my dear brothers and sisters, we want to offer ourselves as a living, living sacrifice to the Father when we have to die to the world so that we could know what is God's will and what is good and perfect in His eyes. The Proclamation of the Holy Gospel According to Matthew Jesus began to show His disciples that He must go to Jerusalem and suffer greatly from the elders, the chief priests, and the scribes, and be killed, and on the third day be raised. Then Peter took Jesus aside and began to rebuke Him, God forbid, Lord, no such thing shall ever happen to you. He turned and said to Peter, Get behind me, Satan. You are an obstacle to me. You are thinking not as God does, but as human beings do. Then Jesus said to his disciples, Whoever wishes to come after me must deny himself, take up his cross, and follow me. For whoever wishes to save his life will lose it. But whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. What profit would there be for one to gain the whole world and forfeit his life? Or what can one give in exchange for his life? For the Son of Man will come with his angels in his Father's glory, and then he will repay all according to his conduct. The Gospel of the Lord our Gospel passage for this Sunday is taken from St. Matthew's Gospel. We have been reflecting on dying as the path to true life, as the path to fuller life. In the first reading, the figure of Jeremiah presents to us a, a shining example of how life, how one's mission is found precisely in the experience of dying and self-denial. Jeremiah faithfully proclaimed God's word, faithfully fulfilled his mission, yet he did not get the acceptance, the affirmation, the welcome that a messenger of God deserves. In fact, because of the harshness of his message, the people 
rejected him, and even threatened, threatened him. Now, he was trying to preserve his life. He complained to God, the God who had chosen him and had sent him. But then, in this context of self-preservation, he admits that the Word of God is in his heart, in his bones. It's like fire burning. And he must let it out. He must proclaim that word. He knows the danger. But precisely in that dangerous moment of allowing the word of God to come to others through him, in that dangerous moment, he lives. He truly lives. He's truly faithful to his mission. In the second reading, from the letter of Paul to the Romans, we are told to offer ourselves as a living sacrifice to God. That is how to live, to offer myself in love to God. But how do we do it? How do we achieve that? We have to die to self. We should not conform ourselves to the world, to the dictates of the world, to the pleasures of sin. Instead, we should be transformed in our minds so that with such a transformation, with our death to self, we will see more clearly the will of God, what is good, what is pleasing, what is perfect. Then we live. We can offer ourselves as a living and a pleasing sacrifice to God, our spiritual worship. The gospel brings us to the figure of Peter. Remember how Peter proclaimed by God's grace and revelation the true identity of Jesus. You are the Messiah, the son of the living God, which prompted Jesus to praise God and to tell Simon, son of John, that he would now be called Peter, the rock, on which Jesus will build his church. And he was given a new mission. He will be given the keys of the kingdom of God. Okay, all beautiful. Now, Jesus explains to Peter and the disciples what type of Messiah he would be. A Messiah who would be arrested, who would suffer, in the hands of the chief priests and the scribes, a Messiah who would be put to death, but a Messiah who will rise from the dead after three days. Upon hearing that, Peter experienced an inner conflict, which prompted him to say to Jesus, God forbid, oh no, this should not happen. If we enter the mind of Peter and the disciples, I think they were trying to tell Jesus, look, we followed you because we had hopes in you, high hopes in you. Now, please, we have been suffering under foreign occupation. We have been bearing all the distress and the misery of poverty and persecution. Now you're telling us that you, our leader, would die, would be arrested. We have no use for a Messiah like you. We want a Messiah who could promise us, promise us a relief from all suffering and pain. Please promise us. Peter failed to hear the message of the resurrection. Or if he had caught the message of the resurrection, he did not want a resurrection that would pass through arrest, trial, crucifixion, and death. No, not that. Life at once. New life at once. But Jesus confronted Peter and said, Get behind me, Satan. Satan. The tempter, you are tempting me, Peter. 
you are leading me to a path that is not in accordance with God's will. You are making me trip, so you are tempting me. For your thoughts are not God's thoughts. Your thoughts are again back to the thoughts of the world. What St. Paul calls conformity to the world. Peter needs conversion. Peter needs to die to the norms, the criteria of the world regarding life, liberation, freedom, and salvation. Jesus now expounds this teaching, expands it, explains it, and says, if you want to follow me, if you want to be my disciple, if you want to share in my life, then you have to take the path that I will be taking. Like me, you should deny yourselves. Like me, you should take up your cross daily. Like me, whom you are following towards fullness of life, through the cross, like me, you would have to take the same path. And as a, almost like a statement of a policy, <laughs> Jesus says, Oh, the person who preserves one's life will not find it. And the person who loses one's life, who abandons one's life, will definitely find it. This is the way to life, not by preserving it, the temptation that Jeremiah had experienced. But thanks to God's light, Jeremiah realized that it was not by preserving himself from danger and running away from conflict that he would find true life. No, it was by being true to his mission and dying to himself that he would find true life. My dear brothers and sisters, Jeremiah, Paul, Peter, Jesus. They are all being presented to us. We all want to live. We all desire for fullness of life. But what is the path that we are taking? No wonder many people still remain after years of hard work, hard labor, they still remain unsatisfied. No wonder we get tired, but we get tired with an, an, a feeling of emptiness, as though all of our efforts redounded to nothing. No wonder, in spite of the gadgets that we own, uh, the fine clothes that we are able to buy, we remain unhappy. We remain lifeless. Why? Maybe the path that we are taking is not the true path, the path of dying to self, carrying our crosses out of love, being critical of what the world offers to us as promises of life that end up in frustration. This is a time to learn from Jesus. Let us fully live by embracing self-denial and embracing our crosses. Once I was in a retreat for religious women and I noticed that in this group of Filipinos and Asians, there was a, a non-Filipina. And so I engaged her in conversation. I asked her how many times she has been uh, home to her home country since being uh, assigned here, how often that happens, etc. And uh, she, she responded, but she, I, I thought she felt happy that I asked that question. It was a moment for her to testify. She said that once she was sent on a short trip to her home country just to attend to you know, some matters. So it was not a, a regular home visit. It was just a visit of three days. She had to make a choice. She said, from the airport, she would go to one city. But going to that city, 
she would pass through her home city. But she had to make a decision. She did not stop. She did not stop uh, to visit her family. She just went straight to the place where she was sent. Did her mission there, did uh, uh, what she was supposed to do, and after two days, went back to the airport and returned to the Philippines. Now, some people would say, oh my, how impractical, how heartless, no? But she gave an answer. She, she said to me, I was very clear that what, that was not a home visit. I was clear that I was sent there to settle something related to mission. Of course, I longed to see my parents and my, my, my brothers and sisters, but I had to die to that for mission. And take this, when her mother heard that she was in the vicinity, but did not pass by the home, you know the remark of the mother? My daughter is a true religious. I respect and admire her. Wow. A lot of dying to self. But you find the path to true life. The word has been exposed. Let us now fulfill it.